Hello everybody, Bill Platt here, and I'd like to talk to you today about promoting your books. Uh, a lot of us, when we first get started, we're really intimidated by this process of how do I promote myself, how do I promote my books, uh, how do I do that without uh, having to put my face on camera, how do I have, have to do that without spending a whole lot of money on advertising, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about within this video. So. There's a guy a few years ago, he wrote a book, he, he, he's a household name now, but at the time, no one knew who the guy was. And what he had done with his particular book, he identified a particular target audience who would be interested in owning his book and reading his book. And so he did some research and he figured out that the people who would be most likely to want to buy his book particularly uh, hung out on four different websites. So he launched his campaign, he wrote up a bunch of articles and got them posted on his four target websites. And he bought advertising on his four target websites. Now the thing was, he got in there and he got his articles in there and people were starting to recognize his talent and what he brought to the community. And then as they read articles, once they read one of his articles, then they would start noticing his ad over here in the sidebar promoting his book. And through this process of being on four websites, he didn't worry about the millions of websites out there. He didn't worry about social media. He just focused on these four primary websites and his goal was not to be uh, known by everybody on the planet his goal was to be not only known but recognized by all the people who visited these four websites so he just hammered those websites with advertising and articles and the audience he's dealing with at that point is probably a hundred thousand people between the four websites hundred thousand uh, monthly unique visitors to these four websites. In doing this process, he was able to elevate himself and his book from complete unknown to New York Times bestseller within a month. And to this date, his book is still uh, very high on the uh, sales charts. And I'm betting that you actually know uh, the name of his book and his name, but I'm not going to uh, disclose that in case I'm attributing it to the wrong person. I know the story is accurate, but I'm not sure that the author I'm attributing it to is accurate. So rather than to put myself in a position of a gotcha, you did that wrong, I'm just not going to tell you his name. So uh, when we all start out, uh, we all have the same basic problem. No one knows our names. They don't know who we are. They don't know what value that we would bring to their lives. Um, they don't know about our books. So when we're starting out, we all start from the same basic zero. No one knows our name. No one knows who we are. No one knows about the books we publish. Nobody knows why they would want to own the books that we are publishing. And so I was listening to a guy this morning, and he said, you know, here's the thing. We don't need millions and millions of people to see our name in order to make a good living. Uh, he said, if we have 1,000 people paying us $200 a month, then that's $200,000 a month revenue. Now, when we're dealing with journals and coloring books and uh, small books that we sell on Amazon, we're not getting $200 a month from these folks. So if we, if we uh, take that same scenario and drive it down a little bit and make it a little bit more realistic and say, okay, if we can make $4 per person per month, then how many people do we need to make a decent living? If we have a thousand people buying our books every single month and we're making $4 a book, that's $4,000 a month revenue that we're bringing into our business. So when you break it down like that, it makes it a lot more realistic to realize that you really, it doesn't take a whole lot of people to make us the kind of money we want to make. 
when I first started out, nobody knew my name. That was a long, long time ago, 2000, 2001. Uh, I actually got started with about 50 customers and over time it just grew and grew and grew and grew and now I have thousands of people who throw me money every once in a while. So whether it's $17 here, $17 there, $34 or even $85, whatever you know, uh, however much I'm making per transaction, sometimes it's only $8 a transaction or $4 a transaction. It really doesn't matter what the amount is. When you have enough people putting money into your wallet every month, then you have a reliable income that you can uh, take care of yourself with. And that's what we're, that's where we're looking to go with our book publishing business, our self-publishing. We want to get out there and get known by people. And it's not a whole lot of people we need. We just need some people. And so that brings us up to question, well, how do I get in front of the right audiences? Well, the first thing is understanding your target audience, understanding who is most likely to want to buy your books, what are their uh, traits. So with my self-publishing business, when I do training, 60% uh, of my customers are women, okay? 92% uh, are over the age of 40. Okay, so I'm able to narrow down a little bit who my audience is, and now I just have to figure out how to get in front of my audience and tell them about my books, okay? So the first thing is no one knows your name. The second thing is that we need to get exposure through any means necessary to get in front of our target audience to get them paying attention to us and by extension paying attention to the books that we write. Now a lot of us, a lot of people I talk to, they're really intimidated by the idea of doing social media. Uh, they're intimidated by the idea of doing videos. And realistically, here's the thing, a lot of us are intimidated by the process. For years I didn't do videos, to be honest with you. Um, and because there are so many things wrong with me. I've got a receding hairline, for God's sakes. I wear glasses, and they're ugly. And I've got, I joke around, I say, I have a face that's made for radio and a voice that's made for TV, uh, a voice that's made for print. So I have my shortcomings. I, I'm not the best looking guy, and I don't look awesome, and uh, women don't swoon at my feet uh, because I'm so attractive. And my voice isn't perfect. Um, I can broadcast my voice, but I don't really do well with enunciation sometimes. Sometimes I slur my words and I'm imperfect. And here's the thing. A lot of us, we don't do certain things. Like we don't do video or we don't put ourselves out there on social media because we are scared to death that somebody's going to criticize us. And the whole concept we all are self-conscious and self-aware and we're worried about what people might say uh, criticisms that people might have for us and so we go through life worried about what other people think of us and realistically we if you want to be successful you can't be worried about those things if I quit doing videos the first time somebody told me dude you're ugly I would have gone and cried in the corner and have been the end of that and I probably nobody would know my name and um, nobody would be paying attention to what I say. So we have to be willing, we have to grow thick skin. I, I say we grow thick skin, but technically what we're doing is instead of growing thick skin, we're ignoring the trolls. We're ignoring the people who would criticize us. And so, one of the things growing up, you know, uh, there's, we're all, we all have insecurities. And it started in our childhood and it progressed into our adulthood. And honestly, you know, you'd think 53 years long that I would be, I'd have it all together, right? Well, I don't. I, I'm just, I'm like a little boy inside sometimes. I, I know a lot and I've done a lot and I have a lot of great things to share with other people but realistically I am a big wobbly 
a ball of uh, insecurities. And everybody, we're all insecure about something. So we can't let our insecurities drive our actions. We can't worry about what people will say that might be critical of us. So what we want to do is we want to put ourselves out there so the people who are interested in what we're doing can pay attention to us. And the people who are going to troll us are going to troll us anyway. Uh, for the longest time, I would post on social media and I would post something that I thought was funny and people would come out of the woodwork. Oh my God, I can't believe you said that. You got to take that off of Facebook. And at a certain point, I grew thick enough skin where I could tell people, no, it's not my job to make sure you're not offended. My job is to be me, and if you don't like it, you can buzz off, okay? So the thing of it is, I'll post up a joke sometimes, and somebody's going to somebody's going to take offense. Well, I'm not doing it to be offensive, but somebody else's offense is not my problem. That's my point. And so... I put stuff out there, and the people who like it, like it, and the people who don't like it, don't like it, and I invite them to unfollow because the I'm not going to jump through hoops to make everybody else in the world happy. As long as I'm making me happy, I'm happy, right? So that's what it's all about. We have to do what we need to do. When I first started growing a mailing list, I would get, I would send out emails and then Somebody would unsubscribe and complain. And I would panic. Oh my God, somebody complained about me. And then I wouldn't mail for three or four days. And then I'd be thinking, but wait. I still have 2,000 people who want to hear from me. Why am I worried about this one person who filed a complaint? Right? So I could build my entire business around the one person who's complaining... Or I can build my entire business around the 2,000 people who are waiting to hear from me. So I made that decision. I, I built my business around the 2,000 people who do want to hear from me. And I ignore the one or a dozen people who complain. Okay? And we should all do that. We should all strive to be the very best we can be to the people who want to see us. Okay? So that's the next thing. So... Exposure. We have to be willing to get our feet wet. We have to be willing to dive in and put material out there without fear or concern of somebody criticizing us. You cannot let other people's emotions dictate how you run your business. Do not be afraid of somebody being critical of you. Uh, growing up, my grandmother, God bless her soul, she told me, it's really funny, I was telling somebody this story the other day, and they're like, wow, I can't believe anybody would say that, but she would always ask me, Bill, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would always say, well, I want to own my own business. And her response was always the same. It never changed. It was, Bill, people like us, we don't operate our own businesses. We work for other people. And one day when I was 13 or 14 years old, I'd heard that from her so many times throughout my life. And something was different that day. And she's like, Bill, people like us don't run our own businesses. We work for other people. And I responded, maybe you don't run your own business, but I will. And I've done that, you know. I, I've gone on to have a successful business life self-employed. I haven't had a job since 2005. So, I'm doing something right. But if I would to if I would have let her negativity drive my actions, then I would still be working in a warehouse or working in a sales room or something. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today, right? So, that's the deal. We cannot let people's negative uh, opinions of us dictate how we run our business. So the next one is um, likes. Likes and follows. Followers. Followers don't give you money. Uh, likes don't pay your bills. 
Both of them are important things to consider when you're looking at social media. What we run into when we're doing social media is that a lot of people become addicted to how many followers they can get. They set up a YouTube channel with the expectation that I want to get 100,000 followers because I can make money from that. Well, the real reality is you're generally being paid one penny for every minute viewed on social media. And so if I do a 10 minute video, maybe I'll make 10 cents if one person watches the entire video, but that number is not even right. It's one tenth of one penny for every minute viewed. So if I get 10 minutes of view time on YouTube and I have AdSense att attached to it, chances are I'm going to make a penny for that 10 minute video. And there really isn't much of a living to be made by selling, by letting Google put ads on top of your videos. Where your money is made is when you redirect people who are interested in what you're doing to where they can buy what you have done. So I've written a book and you can check it out at, on Amazon at this address. Uh, just go over there. If you want to support me, go over there and buy one of my books. Now that's the approach you need to take when you're doing like YouTube. And maybe you don't want to put your face on camera. Maybe uh, you're wanted in 15 states and so you only want to use your voice and then you would do just podcasts. Or if because we are all, anybody listening to the sound of my voice actually potentially has, they're either writers or they work in a field where writing is important. So uh, writing posts on social media will get you the same kind of exposure you want, but it's not the likes that are going to make you the money. What's going to make you the money is the people who are drawn to you, the people who like you enough that they want to support your endeavors. So that's the deal that we have to strive for is helping people make the determination that they are willing to support us in what we do. So we present to them opportunities to buy from us. That's all we're doing with our social media is we're putting out the information, we're getting them to pay attention to us and here's the important thing about that. Um, the last thing I want to cover in this is uh, we should be paying attention to people who pay attention to you. So if you go over to social, you go to Facebook or you go to Twitter and somebody likes your post, have a conversation with them. If they comment on what you've posted, respond to them. If they share your post, like it because what happens is most everybody on social media they're driven by an ego we all have that ego we all want to be liked so when somebody shares your post and you click like when they shared the post then they get that uh, adrenaline rush that somebody likes what they're doing and they'll pay closer attention to you because you're paying closer attention to them. It's the interactivity between you and the people who follow you. So we have to put ourselves out there and be willing to take those slings and arrows, but we don't really have to take the slings and arrows at all. We just bat those away because the trolls don't matter. What matters is the people who care about us, right? So it's not the likes that are going to pay your bills. It's the people who like what you're doing and want to support your efforts online. So we put ourselves out there in the form of posts or videos or podcasts or however we choose to reach out to the world with our message. But it's like uh, with the video, if we put out videos and then people comment on those videos and they share those videos like where they shared it, acknowledge that they are paying attention to you. Acknowledge them because they want that boost. And by putting yourself in that position where you're putting yourself out there, people are liking you, and you're acknowledging them and having a conversation with them, then they like you as a human being 
more than they like you as a content creator. And because they like you as a human being, they're willing to do what they need to do to support you continuing to do what you're doing right now. And that is the key to us finding people who want to buy our books. We have to put ourselves out there. Don't focus on the likes. Focus on building the relationship with people. And when you've built that relationship with people, you build that relationship by paying attention to the people who are paying attention to you. Okay? And then we present them an opportunity to buy from us. We don't tell them, hey, go buy this. It's not a demand. It's not a... Uh, we're not begging either. We're not saying, please buy this because I need to make my car payment this month. Instead, focus on giving people great value and giving them the opportunity to support you. And in doing so, you'll be able to grow your business, grow your publishing business. And it may start out that there's only 10 people who care enough about you to buy your book. But the more you talk, the more people who are going to be paying attention to what you say. And the more people you interact with, the more people who are going to want to support you. So it's we have to build that interaction with other people, whether we're doing that through YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, whatever the case may be, we need to build those relationships because those people we build relationships with will not only support us themselves, but they will share our message with their friends and family, okay? And that's how we'll grow our business. And all we really need to do is get out there and find the first 10 people who are willing to purchase our books and then go out there and find the next 20 people then go out there and find the next 40 people. And we do that through content creation. We do that through being willing to stand up there and let people throw arrows at you, rocks and arrows, but you don't worry about those people because the people who are criticizing you aren't buttering your bread. So you don't worry about what they say or what they think or be, we cannot be, we, the, we can't be uh, let other people's negative opinions drive our business. We need to focus on helping those who do support our business. Helping them achieve what they want in life. And if your book helps them with their goals, then they'll buy your book. So get out there. Make posts. Do social media. Make text posts. Do video posts. Do short video posts. Do 30 second takes. The more content you put out there, the more opportunity people have to find you, decide they like you, and pay closer attention to what you do. And that's how we grow our book sales. So I hope this has made sense. If it has, uh, drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought. And until next time, I'm Bill Platt. Have a great day.